Okay. Am I good? All right. Okay, hi everybody. I feel like I'm in the U.S. Congress, uh, you know, <laughs> speaking to an audience, but I know there's a bigger worldwide audience as well. But anyway, so uh, I'm glad to be here in Seattle and just want to give you a, a quick update on planetary pinball and what we're doing and what is generally going on in the parts, pinball parts industry. So just the obligatory who are we and what do we do. Uh, uh, basically, we're the licensee of Williams Electronics Games, uh, so we manufacture, sell, and distribute uh, replacement Bally Williams pinball parts. So we do Williams Bally. We don't do others. Um, uh, we are Rick and Matt. Matt uh, may or may not pop in here. He's up here for the weekend. And, uh, and we have a team of people down in San Jose uh, working on parts and uh, packing parts. So we have also a, a digital reproduction art studio uh, where we make a lot of artwork products that you'll, uh, you know, we'll go through a little bit later. And then we specialize in short run parts. So the pinball industry, you know, is not geared to do large runs or replacement parts. So we try to figure out how to do short run parts. Uh, located in San Jose and we've been in business for about one and a half years, a little bit over that, okay? Um, what we are is we're a licensee of Williams to do Williams Bally parts, but in addition to what we need to have licensed from Williams, we also typically have to have third parties to do other parts. So if you're doing uh, Star Trek or Twilight Zone or things like that, uh, you typically have to also have a license uh, for doing some of the custom artwork and uh, specific parts for those uh, games as well. So. Uh, you know, typically there are uh, that kind of a relationship that we also engage in as well. I'll go into that a little bit more later. Um, so I want to just kind of go through kind of what's the latest. Um, and, you know, basically what we typically do is we go try to find the most interesting parts to make uh, that have demand or are hard to get or uh, otherwise are difficult if you don't have a license or the means to make them, and then we, we go and do it. And part of what we need to do is acquire licenses for some of the more popular game brands. So we just acquired the license for Universal, which gives us the rights to make Creature from the Black Lagoon and uh, Monster Bash parts. Uh, we have a uh, license with CBS, and uh, that gives us Twilight Zone and Star Trek Next Gen. Uh, we have Elvira, Indy 500, and a bunch of others. So. That allows us to make things like translites and cabinet art and various decals and various toys and so on and so forth for the games. And so that's part of doing business in the pinball world is having the licenses from the, um, you know, from the various different titles that you're trying to do. And we keep uh, trying to get more and more. Uh, you know, sometimes they're nice, uh, sometimes they're not. Um, so that's going on, which gives us the ability to make some of these new parts. Uh, another thing we've done is we've done a, a, an arrangement with a color DMD. I'm sure people have seen the attack from Mars out there with a color display, which is, uh, which is really neat, and we'll be offering that for more and more games. So we've done an arrangement with the color DMD guys to get that uh, into the market, and, uh, and we're glad that that's now shipping. So attack from Mars is current, and then other titles are coming through the year. Um, we continue to do a whole bunch of development and production, whether it be, you know, artwork, uh, you know, we have a full digital studio where we have a, a number of people that are graphics artists that are developing cabinet sets, translites, decals, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, we've just released uh, recently Party Zone cabinet decal sets, which are uh, silk screen that we work with uh, a partner on. Uh, we're doing Monster Bash right now since we acquired the license. Uh, working on Whitewater, No Good Gophers, Taxi, you know, Cabinet Art, as well as a number of others. Uh, we do a lot of molded plastic parts. Um, and we've kind of figured out a way to do uh, what I would call short run plastics um, without huge tooling costs and, and so forth. So, you know, as an example of that, we worked with somebody who just recently did uh, the, <coughs> the Shadow Furbas. Uh, uh, who did it in a short run kind of model. So these type daggers that are on shadow that constantly break, 
uh, as well as the figurine uh, uh, for the, uh, the Mongol are also done. But there are a number of, we've probably done, I don't know, at least 50 to 100 different uh, short run plastics, whether it be, I don't know, Valley Logo Lane guides or Rudy faces or things like that. Um, you know, there are a number of different uh, plastic things that we do which uh, don't require huge tooling costs, don't require large investments of time and energy to, uh, you know, uh, get the tooling done and, and don't require large investments in terms of thousands and thousands of parts which otherwise wouldn't be able to be funded and done. So we're, we're doing that. Um, a lot more play fields are coming out. This year, uh, we work with Classic Playfields, who works under our license, who's doing at least, I don't know, they're trying to do 10 or 12 playfields this year. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it right now. So Attack from Mars will be out, you know, let's, let's say in a month. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the euro and <laughs> a number of other factors. But generally, they'll be roughly around where they used to be. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember what the price was recently. And then depending on where you buy them from, you know, there'll be a different price, I'm sure. So, uh, but those will be out shortly. Um, CPR just released Firepower, Pinbot, and a bunch of other games. Uh, more are coming. And uh, we're trying to ramp up a couple other Playfield suppliers, you know, but uh, there's quite a learning curve to get through to get a halfway decent play field out. But uh, hopefully there's a couple more guys that'll come online that will be doing uh, play fields soon. Um, we did a bunch of new plastic sets. Recently we just did Whodunit, Indy 500, Earthshaker just came out from classic play fields and, and a bunch more. So that's just an example. Um, and then we're doing a whole bunch of metal parts, brackets, and you know various stuff that is needed. We just um, kind of put together the the original Bally Williams spinners, which haven't been available, you know, just the, the rotating metal spinners for the early Bally Williams games. So, and then we're imprinting them with all the artwork. So they'll be powder coated and, you know, so you don't need decals, you just buy the whole spinner and, and do it that way. So, uh, you know, just various new stuff. We're working on the tubs for, you know, the white uh, insert panels for uh, WPC 95 games, so all the different, I think there's 10 different titles, different hole patterns, and so on and so forth, so we're working on that right now. Uh, just a bunch of other things. There's probably 100 different projects at the same time going on between a number of different uh, partners that we work with to, to make the latest and greatest of, of parts. Um, the other thing that we do is we have the domain pinball.com, so we use that um, you know, to kind of house the store, which shows kind of what we have uh, in terms of parts, but we're also putting more and more uh, Williams Valley content on there and, uh, and working to get more, you know, reference material there. So uh, we put recently the parts manual, so all the uh, probably 20, 30 different year by year parts manuals, including all the big, thick 800 page books are all online you know, in, including individual keyword search. So you can search for a part number in an 800 page manual and find it almost immediately. So, or where it is and then go to the page that it's on. So you should check out what, you know, any of those parts manuals because it makes searching for a part a heck of a lot easier than trying to even find it even if you have the paper copy. So uh, we're doing that for the parts manuals. Uh, we've got most of them there, adding some more uh, we're doing game manuals, the same thing, so you'll be able to search by part number, keyword in any game manual. And then we're putting up all the early Valley and Williams EM schematics now. So those are, you know, being scanned and cleaned up and so on and so forth right now. And then more and more content as we go. So again, the goal is just to put a resource out there, you know, we're not... Uh, charging anybody to join or subscribe to the site or anything like that. It's really just going to be reference material that's available to everybody uh, to kind of help in uh, doing what they need to do. Um, okay, then I want to kind of really move on to where are things going. So um, what, uh, what we're going to be doing is a lot more production through 2012, um, you know, with our partners and our suppliers. 
So that is a lot more molded parts. We have a queue of a whole bunch of uh, parts to do. Uh, metal parts, licensed parts, uh, creature holograms have come up. Uh, we're working on getting those done. Uh, we just released the Monster Bash figures, et cetera. Uh, and then a whole bunch of, of art, so art-related projects. We have uh, you know, a whole stack of cabinet art and translites and decals and play fields and plastic sets and so forth that, uh, that we're trying to fan out you know, to try to get as many people working on those as we can. Um, where things are about to go, and you see that a little bit with Jersey Jack's game, is to direct print. Um, and so direct print is where, um, where the opportunity is to do some lower volume uh, game titles that otherwise wouldn't carry the investment to do a silkscreen run or uh, you know, kind of don't have the investment to go make 250 sets of cabinet art or things like that with a silk screen. Um, so we are working on a number of different options for direct print, you know, on glass and plastics and play fields. So imagine, uh, uh, I don't know, you might have a favorite game like Rocket. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, and doing a play field for that on glass would cost a, a lot of money and a lot of time to make, you know, 10 or 20 and, you know, depending on how many are out there. But some people might be, you know, very eager to get a rocket back glass. I don't know who that would be, but it, it might be possible. And so, you know, imagine that we could just, uh, you know, get the artwork and then deposit that directly on glass and have a reasonable, you know, uh, uh, rep reproduction of a, of a glass, you know, either on glass or plastic or even on translite material, uh, depending on the title. So that is in process with us right now. We have the rights to do it and we can do it and the technology is there to do it and it just is one of the things that we're working on. Um, the other thing that's going on is, as you've seen with the Jersey Jack, uh, Planetary Pinball did a, a, an arrangement with Jersey Jack where we are the parts distributor for Jersey Jack Parts, as well as he's licensed the rights to use Williams Valley Parts in his game. Uh, so that works to everybody's advantage by giving uh, everybody a, a new supply of parts that we'll be able to leverage, you know, through our channels to make, you know, what could have been some common parts that weren't available now are available because we've got a, a supply uh, through Jersey Jack's, you know, thousand or two thousand games that he's making right now that are using a lot of these Williams Valley parts. So that will turn around and come on our shelves to be available for all the games that use those parts. So, the, you know, the advantage of leveraging those, you know, those common parts will make its way through the market and to everybody that needs those kind of parts. Um, as I said, more, more art, artworks coming, more contents coming, and, uh, and there's some more interesting developments that are in the works that we really can't go through uh, without uh, killing you first. But um, anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the, the simple set of what, uh, what we are doing and what we have done and what we continue to do. Uh, it's a busy life, and um, you know, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of trying to get the parts to reproduce as exactly as you can. I mean, we cater to the hardest of the hardcore pinball people, and so our objective is to try to make the best part that we can. Um, you know, there's there's always some limitations as to what you can do that is the best, and uh, but we try to to do what we can do. So. Um, that's uh, that's kind of what I had. Um, you know, I always have my Newton's law of pinball parts, which is what what happens in the pinball world is, you know, you've got the the desire to have the highest quality of anything come out because everybody's comparing and assumes that you know the original stuff is somehow coming out from the original suppliers in the original way. Um, that's balanced against that they want a, a reasonable price. A reasonable price is a, a good price, and, and so that sometimes is difficult when you compare that to needing, you know, the, the, the low volumes that you're going to have nowadays. It's not thousands of games that are supporting thousands of parts. You know, it's, it's a few hundred people that are going to buy something right away, and then everything trickles. And so you have to kind of figure out how to 
not burn up all your cash flow into parts that are never going to be sold, you know, just because you're trying to make a part available. And then uh, the difficulty of these parts to make. Making a, a reproduction part is a lot harder than just making a part because when you make a Jersey Jack part, there's no comparison. You don't have to compare the colors or the shape or the size or the durability or this and that. When you're making a reproduction part, quite often without the original tooling or the original artwork or this and that, it, it's a really difficult challenge to kind of figure out how to, how to get that to the, to the right levels to make everybody happy. So, you know, this formula always seems to be the same with just about everything that we do. And, you know, what we're trying to do is just figure out how to, how to make these parts and, uh, and get them out to the market. So, with that, um, let me see if there's any questions. And then I have some stuff to give away. And then I'm going to jump on a plane and go unpack everything. Questions? Yeah, you said that uh, you're working on No, it's not out. Uh, what we, we just got the license, so we've had probably uh, three or four different uh, uh, parties contact us about getting them made. Uh, as you may or may not know, there was several attempts to make these things in the past, which had different degrees of good or bad result. And so we're trying to avoid that past situation where you have red holograms or things like that and trying to get them done correct. You know, there may be, there may be a scenario where we do, um, you know, some super high quality, same process holograms, which will generally carry a higher price. Uh, and there may be some processes that are more uh, economy type that will still provide a green hologram, but will not have the same clarity or this and that and, and trying to figure out if there's two different uh, products or one but you know the objective is to try to get those done as soon as we can so the answer is no they're not done yet but we have the rights to do them and we have uh, let's say we are close to having the means to have them done correctly and then we'll you know once we get that all sorted out then we'll tell people what the availability is and the price and yada 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 so all right do you think the whitewater foil topper will ever be remade? <laughs> so the whitewater foil topper was probably one of the first projects that I looked into when we got the when we when we started the company, and uh, we went so far as to figure out. I have an NOS one that I that I bought at uh, Expo a couple years back, and so we uh, we kind of got this all set up to figure out what it would take to make it. Um, part of the problem is there was a lot of dye embossing and things like that that have disappeared that would have to be recreated. And then it was a little bit tricky as to the process. There aren't that many companies in the country that can do this process. And what you learn a lot is a lot of the process that, you know, like the uh, the, the film that was used for holograms just no longer is used anymore because there's just not you know that's not what they do, and I'm sure there's some environmental issues or things like that with the uh, the silver uh, um, that was involved in in making those. But uh, you know, back to the the foil topper, we did. There is a way to get them made. I, I think the problem is that the the cost to make them is really really high, and then the the unit quantity that you would have to make is really, really high. And the combination of those two doesn't bode well for trying to either price it reasonably for the market or to get enough sold so that you can even get your money back. So that's kind of the problem, is we would love to have them made, but uh, until now, there's not, you know, there's not the, the economics just don't, don't support it. Um, you know, that doesn't mean it won't change. There's a couple other paths that we're looking at and so on and so forth, but right now, it's, it's, uh, it, we haven't figured out how to crack the nut on that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All right, well, with that, I'm going to give away some stuff. Um, the obligatory translate giveaway is here. So these are, uh, translates that we produce uh, in our shop, uh, which are 
in this case, Twilight Zone. And uh, now I don't know how to, uh, uh, I know who we're going to exclude out of this whole thing. <laughs> so, so everybody's chances got a lot higher. <laughs> As, as, as I said when you weren't in here, I feel like I'm in Congress, you know, um, but we have a larger online audience. And so basically this is an example of the uh, Twilight Zone translates that we do. Um, so the, the hard part about doing these is, A, you got to have the, the uh, CBS license to, with Twilight Zone to do that, which we have. And then the other part is you got to be able to figure out how to get the, the white on the back and uh, print it out accurately and have it have the right translucency and have the little stars in the back which a lot of these reproduction bootleg versions don't have and uh, and uh, and so we make these uh, uh, as well as a bunch of other translates so let's see question we'll have is uh, uh, let's see Yeah, I mean, who, uh, well, I think everybody could magically own a translate, a, a Twilight Zone, or whenever we do that kind of question. So, <laughs> let's say, okay, who, who came the farthest distance from, where? Napa. Yeah. We'll take scissors. Okay. Okay, we're going to flip a coin. Flip a coin. No. Uh, we have a warehouse, uh, a couple different locations around the area, and then uh, we have a warehouse with lots of parts in it that if you came in, you would not know where to find anything. So, yeah, it's kind of by design. So if, if a robber comes in and tries to find something, they will be unsuccessful and they won't be able to steal anything. So uh, um, anyway, so yeah. Oh. All right. Anybody have a shadow? I have a shadow, but I'm I'm somehow disqualified from this exercise. Uh, how about an Indiana Jones? All right, then you are the recipient of a brand new biplane. There you go, because everybody needs a, a new biplane. Uh, let's see. Okay, and for the huh? That's right. That's right. Uh, no, I don't think we make those, but we, I'm sure you can get them. And then last but not least, a price guide, so I'll give it to you. Uh, all right, but uh, I think that's all I wanted to go through, because I have a ton of slides about, you know, all the different products we make, but I think, you know, I mean, I can uh, show you really quickly what they are. Um, uh, you know, we <laughs> very quick. So we do coil wrappers. So all the coil wrappers actually were individual part numbers that we make. I don't know. There's probably 200 different coil wrappers for that. Uh, kind of the restorers use to replace on their coils. And you know, you buy these coils that cannot have Williams wrappers on them. Uh, these are the original material and the original artwork and so on and so forth. So. You know, and we're we're on anybody that's selling these things with the uh, reproduction Williams wrappers because they're not allowed to do it. But um, anyway, you can we sell them as game kits, so you can buy an Indiana Jones wrapper game kit and so on and so forth, and seem to be popular with a lot of people, a lot of people restoring games and so on and so forth. Um, we've done a bunch of game manuals, so we've done at least 50 game manuals as close to original as we can get. You know, in terms of the schematics and things like that. Uh, cabinet decals, we've gone through a um, ton of different titles. Uh, we do a lot of the hop stamped, pad printed uh, bumper caps, uh, you know, all the early patterns and so on and so forth. More coming out all the time. 
play fields, uh, trans lights, uh, targets, so we do all the stamp targets, the target sets, and so on and so forth. Um, spinning targets, so these are the, the new ones that are coming out shortly, which uh, have all the artwork on them and powder coated and ready to go. Uh, yeah, they were painted, they were enamel baked, so powder coating really is more durable and looks the same, and, and uh, so we do it that way. Um, back glasses, just a ton of back glasses come out, uh, especially through CPR. Uh, there's going to be some other options uh, uh, in terms of some of the older titles and so forth. Uh, EEPROM, so we have, yeah, go ahead. They're generally silk screen just because you can't hit the colors on, you know, any digital print or any other new technology. So, you know, uh, and, and just as a background, you know, you typically, uh, we, we, we do this next gen process, which is a way to make uh, artwork like on these trans lights and cabinet art uh, are more digitally printed because that's what the technology can support. But that, that new technology can do a pretty good job on uh, certain things. But if the colors are way into the neon or fluorescent, you know, like Party Zone or Elvira and things like that, you really have to go silk screen. Or even Indiana Jones, uh, you really can't hit the colors with any uh, digital printer. And so, you know, we know that. And, and so we generally either try to silk screen to get the original colors or uh, digitally print them when you know we can hit that with those printers, or um, you know, or uh, you know, figure out some different uh, options. Okay, um, I went to the end. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, part of what we do with the license is we build up a catalog of of art. And then we print that art, you know, as close to one at a time as we can so that we don't carry, you know, I mean, it used to be when you did silk screen artwork, you had to make 250 to make it be economical. Okay, nowadays we digitally print these things one at a time. And, you know, uh, I mean, the, the equipment is specialized and some of the processes are specialized, but, um, but we can do it now, and we have the you know the ability and the rights to go do it. So that's that's generally where things are going in the you know in all of these artwork related things. Klondike is uh, what year? Okay. Well, we can look at it. I mean, we can look at any anything. Is it a molded plastic piece or is yeah? Well, we can we can look into any of that stuff. I mean, uh, just send us an email. I mean, I'm at Rick at PlanetaryPinball.com, and you know any of that stuff that could be done that there's a interest or demand for, you know. Uh, and quite often that's going to be the older game parts that break all the time that nobody's ever made a reproduction for. So, you know, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do that stuff. And, and a lot of the stuff we don't have large tooling costs. So, you know, assuming that there's some demand and, you know, it, it makes sense from a business perspective to go do, or at least a hobby, you know, then we'll, we'll think about doing it. All right? So, and that's, you know, a message out to anybody in the, in the, in the world is, you know, if there's things that uh, you're dying that we just, ha you know, need to do that you want us to do, then let us know and we'll, you know, put it in the queue to go do. Uh, so just to wrap up on these quick things, is we're doing a ton of plastic sets. Quite often, uh, Classic Playfields does them, silk screened up in Canada. Uh, we also do a lot of the original Williams Bally um, uh, plastic sets through the original suppliers, and then um, and then we're working with some other people to do uh, you know some new titles that are just after the artwork has to be done, and then they have to be silk screened. So so there's more and more coming uh, out on that. Uh, metal parts, ton of metal parts, molded parts, 
decals, lots of decals, in fact, would lose help. We just got these uh, Elvira target sets uh, done. There were a god-awful number of decals on that, plus they had neon ink, so it was one of the more difficult ones to get done, but uh, they just weren't out there, so we just went and did them. So a lot of playfield decal sets and, and various other ones, insert decals for replacing all the inserts on a game or you know, any apron decals, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got hundreds of decals that we've done already and just continue to you know, have a queue of more to do. Um, and then the last one I think I was starting to touch on were EPROMs where you know, Williams has now given us permission. They had originally blocked doing EPROMs and now they've let us go do that as long as there's a, a hologram on them so that people are not uh, you know, just putting them out there you know, by themselves. So, uh, so those tend to be the big categories of things that we're doing. We're, we're doing them ourselves, we're doing them through others, we're just getting them done. And you know, it really doesn't matter how they get done as long as they get done and get out there and people can use them to get their games restored and running and so on and so forth. So, so that's kind of, that, that's kind of in a nutshell, kind of everything that we're up to and, you know, kind of what we're trying to do and get done. And uh, again, you know, what I, what I always want is any feedback, you know, what we could do, you know, that people want done, you know, and, and quite often it's, you know, if enough people tell us something, then a pattern develops and then we kind of put it in the queue and go get it done. You know, and, and uh, sometimes that doesn't work because it's such low volume and such a specialty item that you just can't get it done or sometimes it costs too much or, or whatnot. But, you know, we try to get done what we try to get done. And we've done, we've probably got about uh, close to 2,000 parts in our, you know, in our inventory of what we've made and what we make and what we distribute. So that's kind of what we're all about. And uh, any questions before I go? Yeah, I mean, the website is, uh, you know, pinball.com or planetarypinball.com, and uh, we try to get as many of the new parts on as we can, as fast as we can, but it, it tends to be an overwhelming problem to keep websites up, get pictures, and so on and so forth. But there's a store there, and, and we're going to kind of work on that and get that uh, better so that people... You know, we, we think about using Twitter or other social media to kind of say what the new parts are and just trying to figure out the right model to, you know, how do you communicate all the new parts that are coming out. We do post on RGP from time to time about some, you know, any of the interesting new parts and just trying to probably figure out the, the best way to get the word out on the parts. And then obviously all the distributors, you know, which Planetary Pinball has eight or ten distributors around the world, and they buy, you know, all the parts and, and sell them through their online stores as well. Well, they're, uh, they're, they're inking them, they're silk screening them next week, I believe. So I don't know what the quantity is because they're being done in Germany. So they're... Um, no, um, I'm sure he'll have a lot of emails after today. So, um, but anyway, yeah, uh, you can contact, uh, uh, it's highclasspinballs.com. So sales at highclasspinballs.com is doing the Attack from Mars uh, uh, rerun. And we should have some uh, at Planetary Pinball to sell on the store. And I just haven't, you know, given that they haven't finished them yet, I haven't really talked to them about to, you know, how we're going to arrange getting some in the U.S. or whether they're all coming from Germany or, or what. But we'll have some for sale, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. I mean, they're, they're cleaned up and, and corrected. We don't make necessarily any corrections to the original manual issues, uh, per se, just because... You know that's not our job to necessarily figure out what's a what's an error and whether it's really an error or whether it's not or this and that. But uh, you know we can we can look into any of those. I'm, I know there's errors because when I go to make rubber ring kits from manual or things like that, there's always going to be something off in the manual. But a lot of that is just the the difference between the production side of when they were making the game and and the engineering side. So, uh, but yeah. All right. So with that, thanks, everybody, and have a good rest of the show.